All right, 607A. Okay. We'll next go to frame 1541. Frame 1541. Uh, can you see the uh, the brochure stitching in this uh, frame? This is another version of the first picture. I can see some ridges on the top left finger that concur with what brochure stitching would look like in a photograph. What characteristics are there that is that relate to brochure stitching that are different from other? Uh, kinds of stitching that are it's, done. It's really the most continuous seam that has ever been utilized within the glove industry, to my knowledge. The other sewing techniques create high lows or raw edge effects or continuous curved effects, whereas this is clearly a seam that is created by the sewing machine grabbing the two pieces of leather and putting them together. Okay. And is that reflected in the crime scene glove, or rather the Rockingham glove? That Martin to today? Yes, it is. And is that also reflected in the new pair of gloves marked uh, 372C? No, it is not. This, this particular pair was the pair that they produced with the same style number after they went out of production. Also, that pair of gloves right there is not uh, the same kind, the same type as the crime scene glove? No, it is not. How'd you know that? That's what I did for 15 years, and it's quite easy for me to recognize it. What is the difference between the Rockingham and Bundy glove and this later model, the later model glove that you have in front of you? Even though it was manufactured with the same style number, 70263, the sewing technique is actually what is called one-half PK sewing, and it has a totally different effect both on the palm and on the back of the glove. And in this particular case, this isn't even the same leather that was utilized in the original gloves. Okay. What is, what strike that? How many stitches per inch are there to a brochure stitch? Approximately 22. Okay. And is that unique? It's almost 100% more than all the... It's almost 100% more than the other conventional sewing techniques that exist. And in the case of a hand sewn, it's approximately four times the amount. Let's go to frame 2425. Let me ask you to, to take a look at the fingertips, the ends of the fingers in that particular photograph. Yes. Does it appear that the, that the defendant's hand, uh, or rather that his fingers are fully and completely uh, into the glove? Objection. Oh, well. In this particular picture, uh, one of two things have occurred. Either the gloves are not completely full, pulled down all the way onto his hand, or there's a little excess in the fingertip. Now, when you were here last, you spoke to us about the, the, the length of the fingers in the crime scene and Rockingham glove. Yes, I did. And you also spoke to us about the length of the defendant's fingers. Yes, I did. And the size of his palm. Yes, I did. Uh, what size palm did you say the defendant had? Mr. Simpson has a size extra large palm, and the fingers on both of his hands are size large. Technically, his real size is a cadet extra large, and this is where the actual fingers are approximately three-eighths to a half inch shorter than a conventional perfect extra large. And so would you expect that if the defendant fully placed his hand into a glove that his fingers would not reach the end of a traditional uh, extra large glove? 
In this particular case, as I stated for the record in my previous visit, there are definitely three different size extra large gloves, one being slightly undersized, one being exactly standard, and one being a little bit larger than standard. And for this exercise, I would say we have to use standard. In a standard extra large glove that was perfectly made for a perfect extra large hand, the fingers uh, in that glove would be approximately three eighths of an inch longer than Mr. Simpson would require. And you do see uh, excess finger space in, in these gloves? In this particular photo, yes. Okay. Let's go to 2585. So this frame depicts the defendant's left hand, is that correct? Yes, it does. Can you see any excess finger space in the left hand? My, my monitor is very, very cloudy on this one. Okay. So you can't tell? Not in this particular one, on the, on the monitor. Okay. Let's go to 3357. Frame 3357, you can see the uh, defendant's right wrist area. Is that correct? Yes, I can. Is there a bunching up of the leather uh, at the right wrist? It, it appears to have somewhat of a gathered look. Okay. And uh, is that significant to you at all? This would be consistent with a lighter piece of lightweight leather. The leather is not that rigid or firm and you get easily get a gathered up look in a lighter weight leather. And so this bunching up or gathering up at the wrist area, is that consistent with this glove being style 70263? Yes. Let's go to 4060. Okay, again, you can see the right uh, the right glove, the right hand? Yes, this is a closer shot. Does the glove appear to have a snug fit? Yes, it does. Okay. And can you see the needle point on the back of the glove? This particular shot shows me the three needle points on the back as well as the blind hem. And is that consistent with this glove being a, a model 70263? Yes, it is. Let's go to 4443. Take a look at this. Uh, frame, if you will. Can you see the defendant's left hand in, in this uh, situation? Yes, I can. What, if anything, uh, did you notice about the uh, hem area, the palm area? This pair of gloves appears to have a palm vent. Is that consistent with the uh, model style number 70263? Yes, it is. Can you also see the uh, uh, Needle point on the on the back of the right hand glove. Yes, I can. Okay. And let's go to four five eight two. And uh, what do you see in the left hand wrist area? This is a, a slightly larger shot of the opening of the palm vent on the left hand on the left hand. And 6777. You see any identifying characteristics uh, in this photograph? The th three points on the left hand as well as the blind hem and the palm vent on the right hand. You described for us a little while ago some of the characteristics unique to style number 70263. Is that correct? Yes, I did. Did you see each of those characteristics uh, exhibited uh, in these uh, frames of this particular video? 
I've seen four of the possible six. Okay. You saw the brochure stitching? Yes, I did. The palm bent? Yes, I did. What are the other two characteristics that you saw? The palm vent, the blind hem, the three three needle points, as well as the brasser stitching. Did you see the cashmere lining? I did not. Okay. Now this videotape is from January 6, 1991. Next question. If so, no foundation. Let's assume that we've heard testimony that this videotape is from January 6, 1991. At that time and on that date, did this glove come in a double extra large? No, it did not. And do you have an opinion as to whether or not the gloves worn by the defendant in this video are Aris Leather Lights, star, uh, style number 70263? Based on what, I've, on what I've seen, I would say that this is Styles 70263, size extra large brown, knowing that I had measured the defendant's hand. And how certain are you of that? I'm 100% certain. Let me show you some photographs. Um, I believe it's 605, the, the Rinker photographs. list of the Rinker photograph 605 or 606. I have uh, 605 as being uh, Mark Kruger. Okay. Rankin I have as 606. We're going to go to 606, Your Honor. May I ask uh, Mr. Rubin to step down, Your Honor? Yes. Mr. Dart. Uh, first, let me ask you to step to the, uh, to the side of the photograph, if you will, the photo board, no, to this one, between Ms. Clark and the, uh, the board. Now, are these all, do these appear to be photographs also taken from that January 6, 1991 game? They appear to be. Okay. And looking at the, uh, the first photograph, of the defendant with the umbrella. Yes. Do you see uh, water uh, water stains on the gloves? Yes, I do. Can you see the brochure stitching? Yes, I can. Can you see the needle points you described? I see the image of the needle points. Okay. Uh, is there a blind hem? Yes, there is. Is that style number 70263? Yes, it is. And would you also take a look at the photographs just to the right of uh, the first one you just looked at? Yes. And if you will, will you turn around, please, and take a look at the photograph Ms. Clark is holding. That would be 606. 606. Yes. Are the gloves worn by the defendant in these four photographs the same style as the gloves found at Bundy and yes. Rockingham? Yes, they are. One moment, John.
Thank you. You can re retake the, uh, the witness stand. Can I leave the board in the, uh, the witness stand? Yes, you can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to go to the Kansas City Buffalo game. Uh, January 94, which is on uh, laser, Your Honor. to the Stuart West photos at 1229.93. Let me show you the photograph uh, shown on the screen here. Those are black gloves, is that correct? Yes, they are. Looking at that glove, can you tell us whether or not there are any uh, characteristics that are consistent with an heiress uh, style number 70263? This is a very clear picture of the brassa stitching on the right hand forefinger as well as the three three needle points. There's a blind hem. And in addition to that, it, it confirms that this leather is very lightweight the way it's uh, actually folded over in that one spot where it's bunched up. Uh, you can see that it's very, they're very close to each other. So it's, it's a very, very thin glove with thin lining. And this is frame number 31175 for the record, Your Honor. Yes. And if you would just step down for a moment. photographs taken by Stuart West on December 25, 1993. Yes. Yes. Looking at those photographs, can you tell us whether or not the glove worn by the defendant in those photographs is style number 70263? Yes, it is. And uh, your opinion is based on what, sir? The fact that the three most important elements of the design of the roster stitch into three points in the blind hand, and those are the and while you're here, let me direct your attention to the photographs taken by Michael Romano. There are two photographs uh, to the right of the board depicting the defendant wearing black gloves. Is that correct? That's correct. And also on frame 30706, Your Honor. Yes. Do you see the three needle point that you described earlier? Yes. In both photographs? Yes, I do. And in both photographs, do you see the brochure stitching? Yes, I do. Is there a blind hem? Yes, there is. Can you see the cashmere lining? In the blow up on this photograph on the right, the beige <coughs> lining of, it is cashmere. Now let me show you the gloves the defendant tried on, the new gloves, People's 401. Yes. Is there an heiress tag uh, in those gloves? Yes, there is. And how does that tag compare in appearance to the tag that we see on the Michael Romano photograph? Well, yeah, I'm going to object to that characterization of what that is. Uh, rephrase the question. Okay. Well, on the Michael Romano photographs, do you see a tag? Yes, I do. Can you tell us whether or not that tag is an heiress tag? I believe it is. Okay. 
And what is it about the tag that leads you to believe that it is an ARIS tag? All of the ARIS leather gloves that were made in production for many years contained a printed Ross patch, printed label with beige material with burgundy printing, which determined the, uh, it had the size, the country of origin, did not include the style number, and it had the ARIS logo with double chevrons, and it was framed in a box in burgundy just as this is, and this one, you know, says 100% cashmere made in the Philippines, size extra large. Okay, he's referring to 401, Your Honor, for the record. Does the tag shown in the photographs taken by Mr. Romano, let's strike that, how, do the tag, how does the tag in the photograph taken by Mr. Romano compare to the tag on People's 401, the Ares Glove that you're holding in your hand? It has the same characteristics of the beige background. I can see some printing. I can see some burgundy printing, but I can't read it in this photo. But there's definitely something with a burgundy cast in it, okay. which is this is what this is what it is. I'm sorry. It's basically what you're seeing is this. Okay. For the record, the witness is holding up 401, Your Honor, uh, to uh, the Romano photograph comparing. Okay. Yes, thank you. Now, when you first came out here to testify, you were made aware that uh, Nicole Brown purchased two pairs of 70263? Yes, I was. Sustained. Well, let me show you the receipt, 372B. Yes, I'm familiar with this. Okay. By the way, did you have any discussion with Mrs. with Mrs. Uh, Brenda Bimich regarding uh, this particular receipt? Briefly. You don't work for Bloomingdale, is that right? No, I do not. Have we accounted for two pairs of style number seven zero two six three? Objection. Vague argument. Sustained. Oh, have we accounted for one pair of brown? Style number 70263 gloves. Objection. Argument. Sustain. Are the black gloves that you just saw the, in the Romano and West photographs style number 70263? Yes, they are. I'd like to show you a frame from. Uh, a football game played on January 5, 1992. Frame number 25862. All right, which uh, exhibit is this from? It is a, uh, it is a new exhibit, Your Honor. Uh, Next in order. Okay. It's part 614. of- 14. Okay, it's part of the same disc. This doesn't help me. All right, 614, Your Honor. Is this a, uh, a frame that you've seen before, sir? Yes, I have. Okay. And have you examined it? Yes, I have. Have you examined it carefully? Very. What characteristics, if any, do you see in that glove that is characteristics that are consistent with style number 70263. This is the clearest and best shot th that I have seen of the brasser sewing on the fingers, but I can also see the image of the three points, but just the two characteristics. But this clearly is that continuous ridge of sewing that is indicative of style 70263. And to go back to the tag for a moment, you. You pointed out the tag in the uh, Romano photograph, and you also pointed out the tag on the 401, the gloves, the new gloves the defendant tried on here in open court. Is that right? That's correct. There's only one tag on a pair of Aris uh, leather lights? In the left hand.
a left-handed glove. I don't see the evidence tag. Glove, the uh, glove recovered at Bundy. Uh, does it also have a an heiress tag? Yes, it does. In the left glove? Yes, it does. And how does that tag compare in appearance to the tag on the uh, Michael Romano photograph? Same location, same size. Can you tell us whether or not the glove worn by the defendant is still 25862, people 614? Objection, Ray. Finish the question. Finish the question. Can you tell us whether or not the glove depicted in people 614 is an heiress uh, like 70262? The key feature of the sewing on the fingers indicates it is style 70263. tried on by the defendant, both the, crime, both the crime scene glove at Bundy, the glove found at Rockingham, and directing your attention to the glove shown in People 614 here on the screen. Frame 25862. Are each of these gloves same style number? They all appear to be the same. Are they each heiress gloves? Yes, they are. Style number 70263? Yes. Size extra large? Oh, the two gloves in front of me are marked extra large. They are extra large, and I believe that the gloves in the picture are extra large, knowing the fact that I did measure the defendant's hand. Let me ask you to step down and take a look at the photographs marked 612 A and B. The photographs taken by Deborah Gadera on December 23, 1993. And that would be a little over six months before the murders, is that correct? Objection. Are these photographs that you've seen before? Yes, they are. You've examined these photographs before? Yes, I have. Do you see any characteristics of these particular gloves that help to determine, help you to determine whether or not the defendant is wearing style number 70263? On this particular photo, to be any decorative stitching on the hem or any stitching on the hem. There are three three needle points. And on the left hand, you can see a little bit of the ridge on the tip of the finger, very fine ridge, continuous sewing. There's a slouchiness in the leather, uh, which is characteristic of that particular style. It's not as good a photo as some of the other photos or videos, but there's nothing here that leads me to, to believe that it would be another style in 70263. Directing your attention to 612, the first photograph, uh, to your left as you face the board. This slouchiness, to what do you attribute that to? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with the way you hold your hand when you move it, your fingers back a little bit, the glove gets a little slouchy and when you curve your hand, you seem to tighten up in the glove, but basically indicates that the gloves had been moved back and forth, and you're going to get some of that slouchiness, because if you, every time you wear a pair of gloves, they're going to stretch a little and comp compress a little, so when you move your hand back and forth, you're, you're going to get a little bit of that bagginess. So the more you wear them, the more they stretch? Sustain with phrase the question. Can you tell us whether or not the gloves stretch? That is the more you wear. 
they will stretch somewhat, but these particular gloves do have memory. A lot of it comes back. Depends upon how the person holds their hand. But they do have a lot of stretch. In them. Does it also depend on what the person does while wearing the gloves? Yes, somewhat. Objection. Hold on. That's her stand. Okay. Now. Let me ask you to retake the stand. When was it that you were sent copies of some of the videotape and some of the photographs you've seen here in court? I received the first set of photographs, I believe it was July 3rd. And when was the first time that you saw the Gadara photograph, 612? I believe that the Gadara photograph arrived <coughs> September 5th. Um, they called me to notify me that they were sending another photo to me after I left here on the 31st. Sustained. Next question. OK, so you received the Gadara photograph around September 5, correct? Yes. Is there anything about the brown gloves that you've seen the defendant wearing that would suggest to you that they are anything other than 70263? Question. They raise the question. Are all the characteristics that you've observed in the brown gloves worn by the defendant consistent with style 70263? Ask and answer. Yes. Can I have one moment, Sean? Certainly. I'm about done. recess at this point. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take our uh, recess for the noon hour. Please remember all my admonitions to you. Don't discuss the case amongst yourselves. Don't form any opinions about the case. Don't conduct any deliberations until the matter has been submitted to you. Don't allow anybody to communicate with you with regard to the case. We'll stand in recess until 1 o'clock. Let me see counsel without the court report. Mr. Rubin, you can step down. 1 o'clock. All right, back on the record in the uh, Simpson matter, the defendants again present before the court with counsel. People are represented. Jury is not present. All right, Mr. Darden, are you ready to uh, conclude your direct examination of Mr. Uh, Rubin? Yes, Your Honor. Thank All you. right, Deputy McNair, let's have the jurors, please. <coughs>
Looks like that we've been rejoined by all members of our jury panel. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. All right, Mr. Rubin, would you resume the witness stand, please? All right, let the record reflect that Mr. Richard Rubin is again on the witness stand undergoing direct examination by Mr. Darden. And Mr. Darden, you may conclude with your direct examination. Thank you, Your Honor, and I will. <coughs> uh, good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Rubin, I wanted to ask you some questions about the wear and tear, if any, on these particular gloves. If we assume, we'll strike that. Now, there's been testimony in this case that Nicole Brown purchased two pairs of gloves on December 18, 1990. Yes. Okay. And I believe you offered some testimony with regard to the style numbers Bloomingdale's carried back in December 1990. When you were first here, is that correct? Thank you. Yes, I did. Okay. And they did carry this model, the 70263. Yes, they did. We've also shown you today photographs and video of brown gloves worn by the defendant on January 6, 1991, correct? Correct. And December 25, 1993. I don't think it was December 25th. I'm sorry, December 23rd, 1993. Correct. Okay. And that would be the Gagare? Yes. Here. Yes, that's correct. Where would you we'll strike that? Where would you first expect to see wear on those gloves, if any? Speculation, no foundation. Foundation. Okay. Well, you told us that you manufactured these gloves. Yes, I did. You designed, helped design these gloves. I designed this particular glove. Yes. Okay. You also sold it. Yes, I did. You handled the marketing. Yes, I did. Um, did you? Uh, attempt to assess uh, the, the life and durability of the glove once it was sold uh, into the general public? Life expectancy and wear and tear was a major concern of our company because it was our reputation. And in regard to this particular pair of gloves, the wear and tear would show up first in the lining. You wouldn't expect to see the wear and tear first on the outside leather portion of the glove? You would not. And you looked at the lining uh, of the crime scene in Rockingham glove when you were here last, is that right? I've seen the linings many times. In fact, I think you removed the lining from those gloves, didn't you? Yes, I did. Okay. Did you note any wear or tear or any evidence of any wear or tear on the cashmere linings of the Rockingham and uh, Bundy glove? In both articles, there actually is no excessive wear and tear whatsoever present. And what does that indicate to you in terms of how often those gloves were worn? They were not worn every day in the winter for year after year after year at all. And were these gloves sold uh, for $55 on sale at Bloomingdale's during December 1990? The original price was 50 Well, you sold the gloves to Bloomingdale's, is that right? Yes, I did. They were exclusive to Bloomingdale's. Yes, they were. Um, and did you discuss with Bloomingdale's the price in which the, at which the gloves would be sold? Sustain. I think we've already had testimony, though, from the people at Bloomingdale's as to the manufacturer's suggested retail price, the sale price. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. And with regard to the black gloves that you've seen, okay, the uh, Stuart West photographs, the Romano photographs, okay. you were shown photographs taken December 23, 1990, and in January 1994. Is that correct? I'm not sure of the exact dates of the photographs on the black gloves. I It is. Okay. And on the Michael Romano photographs of the date uh, indicated to be uh, January 15, 1994? Yes, it is. 
And on the Mark Kruger photograph of the dates indicated there, uh, that, oh, well. is that December 29, 1990? Yes, it is. What would you expect to see the wear and tear in that particular glove? Oh, well. I don't really see any. Oh, excuse me. Overall, oh, you can answer. But. Could he rephrase the question, Your Honor? Or, or, could, he, could he state the question, please? <laughs> yes. Where would, again? You, where would you first expect to see the wear and tear in the black gloves? Initially, the wear and tear would show up in the lining. Okay. Now, is there a certain machine that, that sews this brosher stitch? It is a brosser sewing machine that was made by the Singer Sewing Machine Corporation. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, the model was 46K30, and it was produced around World War II for the last time. So to my knowledge, there has been no Brosser sewing machine produced in the last 45 to 50 years. Okay. And you've told us that this particular type of stitching is rare in, in gloves, men's gloves. It's very rare. Okay. And how rare are these machines nowadays? Oh, well. Currently, um, I was able to find out that Aris Philippines had 37 machines has 37 machines, of which approximately 20 to 25 of them are operational. And of my personal knowledge, going back to 1990, of the 11,000 employees of Aris Philippines, only 10 people were qualified to sew that stitch on a glove. Okay. Not oh. Thank you. Nothing further. Mr. Blazer? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Rubin. Mr. Blazier. Uh, Mr. Rubin, have you tried to be completely impartial in this case? Absolutely. Uh, you haven't been currying favor with one side or the other? Absolutely not. Uh, you don't have any agenda here for one side or the other? I do not. You haven't tried to shade your opinion in any way to favor one side or the other? Absolutely not. Now, on July 3rd, you were sent pictures from, in fact, most all the pictures here, you were sent back on July 3rd before the prosecution finished their case, correct? That is incorrect. You were sent pictures from Mr. Renkin, from Mr. Kruger, Mr. Schott, Mr. West, and Mr. Romano, correct? I believe that's correct. Okay. And you were told beforehand that you were going to be getting some pictures that the prosecution wanted you to look at, correct? Someone left a message in my office that a package was forthcoming, yes. Now, had, I'm sorry. Had they shown you a videotape prior to that time? No, they had not. Had they told you there were videotapes? I don't recall the conversation regarding videotapes at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And you answered that letter before the defense started calling witnesses, didn't you? you I'm not. You answered that letter on July 6th, didn't you? Yes, I did. Before July 12th, 10th, I'm sorry. And you FedExed that letter to the prosecution? Yes, I did. FedEx generally takes one day? To the best of my knowledge. Now, in your letter to the prosecution of July 6th, you told them at that time that the pictures from Renkin, Kruger, Schott, West, and Romano, that it was your opinion that those were the heiress leather light style, correct? I believe I did. You didn't equivocate on that, did you? I actually, either in telephone conversation, I'm not 100% knowledgeable of the leather, of the letter because I haven't seen it, but I did ask them at least over the phone that I wanted to see enhanced blowups and. Uh, I'd like to look at some of these things in the, you know, in the negative or on a small monitor. Did you indicate in your letter on all eight photos, none of the detail that can be seen indicates that the gloves could be a style other than 70263? I did. You were indicating unequivocally that in your opinion, from those pictures that you had last July, it was an heiress glove, correct? That's not the case. 
What I meant by that statement categorically was that I did not see any features in any one of those photos that would indicate that it would be any other style that I had knowledge of. That's what I meant by that statement. Remember us asking you yesterday what you meant by that statement? Yes, that's exactly what and I you, said. You didn't indicate to us that what you meant by that was that it was your opinion back then that from those pictures you could make an identification that those are heiress 70263. I felt I could, but in context I wanted to see more detail. All right. Did you tell us yesterday that you had decided that what you meant by this sentence in here, that you decided back then that your expert opinion was that those were the same style glove? I was not 100% sure at that point in time. Did you tell us yesterday that that's what you meant by that sentence? What? Sustain. Phrase the question. Did you tell us yesterday that what you meant by that sentence is what it says that you could, that in your opinion, these were the heiress style gloves? What I meant, what I meant by that statement categorically was that the features that I could see in the pictures not one feature would lead me to a non-70263 Aris Light style. That's what I meant by the statement. By the statement you made yesterday to us? Yes. Now, when you wrote that letter to the prosecution back on July 6th, did you include as part of that letter If you should have any questions, please feel free to contact me at any time. Please thank everyone for their hospitality during my visit. Maybe I can make it to the victory party, exclamation point, exclamation point. Correct. Now, is this party being planned before the defense started? This statement was made in jest. No differently than on the first day that I testified here. As I walked out, I wished this, Mr. Simpson and the, the crowd the best of luck. It meant nothing. Had the victory party been planned before the defense started? Absolutely not. Were you expecting an invitation to it? No, I, I was never expecting an invitation. Do you consider yourself a member of the prosecution team at that point? No, I do not. Now, did you also indicate in that letter, in a PS, at your convenient, convenience, could you obtain business cards from all the members of your staff as I want to make one, only one, piece for my office as memorabilia of my experience? Please include Mr. Hardman and Mrs. Cl and Ms. Clark. Yes, I did. Now, you were planning to construct some sort of uh, uh, memorabilia for your office, for your customers to see? I have probably 300 envelopes that have sent, been sent to me around the country regarding this testimony. Most of them I haven't even opened yet, and I was planning on actually taking one article, putting some business cards in it, and framing it and putting it in my office as a remembrance of this experience. That's all it was. Cards from the prosecution? Yes. Yes. Now, Mr. Rubin, you were with Aris from what year to what year? I started selling Aris gloves in 1976. I left in 1990. So that was uh, 14 years? A little bit longer. And you're primarily in sales and marketing, correct? No, I was actually part of the management team. I ran the men's glove division, the wholesale division, and had some other responsibilities. Now, you said you actually manufactured the gloves yourself, I think, on direct. Did you mean that? Not physically. Uh, were you part of the manufacturing process where you'd get in there and see and work the machinery and see how it worked? I spent approximately 300 days in the Philippines during my career there. Now, you have been completely out of the glove business since the middle of 1990, haven't you? That's correct. And would you agree that your primary experience with Eris was in sales and marketing? That was the primary function of everybody at Eris Isotoner. You weren't there running the plant on a day-to-day -day business, right? I was not responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of Aris Philippines. Now, have you ever been asked to testify as an expert in any other case? Never. You've never been disqualified as an expert? Never. Now, would you agree that there are many, many people in the glove business that have far more experience with gloves than you? I would not agree with that. Oh, well. You know Mr. Richard Zuckerwar? Yes, I do. I know him personally. You think you have more experience than him? In regard to men's gloves? In regard to gloves. I would say that in the overall glove industry, Mr. Zook Award is one of maybe four or five people that has tremendous experience. As far as men's gloves in sales, marketing, design, and production, I feel that my experience 
regarding Arish product is very excessive as far as his knowledge and in the overall production, sales, and marketing of men's gloves, I feel that my knowledge is excessive of his. Of gloves in general? No, men's gloves. How many years experience does Mr. Zuckerberg have, do you know? Probably, oh, well. I don't want to date the gentleman, but I would say that uh, 35 to years and, experience. And by the way, do you have any other glove experience? Other I'm sorry. Spell his name for the record for us, please. Z-U-C-K-E-R-W-A-R, -E I believe. Do you know Mr. Joe Alusi? I do not. you know who he is? I do not. Now, do you have any other glove experience other than the 14 years with Aris? Can you be more specific regarding glove experience? as far as from a manufacturing point confined to Aris or to other outside facilities? Or well, what, do you, what do you mean by this? Let me rephrase that. Do you have any experience at all with respect to out other facilities besides Aris? Have you ever worked for a glove company other than Aris? No, but I, I have worked with many outside sources of glove manufacturing outside of the controlled and owned operations of Aris. Now, when you say work with, you're being attend conventions with and talk in terms of sales, that sort of thing? No, I mean actually going to their factories, developing product, planning production, de designing new styles, uh, taking customers to certain facilities, uh, very wide scope range. What other companies have you designed styles of gloves for? Well, specifically in the casual end of the business and some dress styles, a company called Palace Industries, which has operations in, did have operations in Thailand, still does, has operations in China, now in Vietnam and also Taiwan. And then I also uh, had experience in working with the Hungarian government in approximately seven different factories throughout Hungary. I've worked in Czechoslovakia. I've also uh, bought and visited factories in Taiwan and Korea, and actually was part of the team that set up a factory in India. Now this is part of your uh, employment with Eris, correct? Yes. It's not separate employment. No. You've never worked for another glove company, have you? No, I have not. Now, one of the uh, parts of your testimony here is that the brasser stitching that uh, you've described that Eris uses is unique is the word that you use. Did you mean unique to mean it's only one of a kind? It is not one of a kind. Uh, these machines were produced from approximately the early 1900s up until World War II, and I'm sure that there are machines that exist all over the country, I just don't know where. How many gloves are manufactured in the world in a, a year, roughly? In today's times? Yes. I really don't have any idea. How about when you were in the business? On a worldwide basis, I really don't know. I did know what we manufactured, and we had estimates of what other manufacturers in the United States sold. Give us your best estimate. In men's gloves, my best estimate in 1990 was there were approximately six and a half to seven million pair out there. And that's not counting any foreign producers? Well, uh, excuse me. All of these gloves were produced outside the United States. Okay. But they were for sale here in the United States. Okay. Uh, how about gloves for sale throughout the world? Do you have any idea how much more that would be? Oh. I, I really have no way of judging that number. Presumably a lot more than to six and a half or seven million? I would assume so. Now, would you agree that brown is probably the most common color for no. gloves, men's gloves? No. What's the most common color? Black. Now, would you agree that the vast majority of men's gloves have three lines on the back? They're called backing, aren't they? I've never heard that phrase. Silking. That's better. Okay. Vast majority of men's gloves have those three lines on the back, don't they? Three decorative points of some configuration, yes. Now, you indicated that one of the reasons that Eris used that particular stitch was to separate those Eris gloves from the run-of-the-mill gloves that you might find um, in Target or Kmart or other, other large retail outlets. Is that fair? That really wasn't the basis for it at all. Well, I think you said that, that it was to distinguish that glove from the less expensive gloves. In general, the combination of the sewing machine used, the point configuration, the blind hem, and the weight of the leather 
and the weighted aligning was what was put together as a package to create an exclusive product. But it wasn't just the one element. It's for a high-end market, wasn't it? The $50 and over market is very, very small. It was a high-end market, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Now, there are a lot of exclusive stores throughout the world in New York, all over the place, that sell high-end leather goods, like gloves, correct? I don't know how many of the stores would carry high-end leather goods, including gloves. Okay, so you don't, you don't have any information on that? No, I do not. Um, there are other more expensive high-end gloves out there besides Aris, correct? Absolutely. Now, you made some effort to try and find out what other manufacturers in the world uh, might have used brosser stitching and produced gloves without stitching, correct? Yes, I did. And how many different companies did you check with? I only checked with two. There are a lot more companies than that in the world, aren't there? In the world, yes. Now, did you ever check with any glove companies in Europe or in Italy? No, I did not. In Europe? No, I did not. Other glove companies other than the two that you've told us about? No, I did not. And what are those two companies? Founds Gloves, F-O-W-N-E-S, and Mr. Zuckerwar's company, Grando Gloves. And Grando does produce a glove with Brosser stitching, doesn't it? They told me that they had produced a glove with Brosser stitching a couple of years ago in small quantity. And they had it in stock? They didn't, they didn't mention that to me. Okay. Uh, so the, two comp the only two companies that you checked with, one of them does this stitch, correct? One out of two. Now, if... Do you have any idea how many other glove manufacturers there are in the world? I have no idea. If, would you uh, agree that there's over a hundred other glove manufacturers in various parts in the world? When have, you... I'm sorry, go ahead. When you define glove manufacturer as anybody who is manufacturing quantity and distributing it on their own, a person who has six employees in a small shop technically is a glove manufacturer. So I would say in places like Italy, Hungary, and certain other Eastern European countries, uh, there could be hundreds of manufacturers. They, they would pr relatively be quite small as far as production. How many of those have Brosser machines? I have no idea. Now, you know that uh, you've seen this stitch on an Italian glove some years ago, didn't you? Yes, I did. Uh, from a small company? I don't know what company it was from. Mm -hmm. Have you made any effort to contact Singer to find out how many other machines there are throughout the world? No, I have not. Are there any other machines that can make a stitch that looks like this stitch? This stitch is a very fine whip stitch. And the machine that I am familiar with that does make a stitch that's similar is called an Osan sewing machine, and the one I'm familiar with was made by a company called Treasure. And can that make a stitch that looks like this? Similar, but not the same. Different in what way? The Osan sewing machine normally runs at about 10 to 12 stitches per inch. The Brasa sewing machine runs at twice that, and the difference is in the bite, when the, it's a whip stitch, both of these are whip stitch type machines, in the bite, you get a high-low effect on the OSAN stitching machine, and you get a larger seam than you would on a continuous seam and fine seam on the brasser. But, but to a layman, the stitches would appear to be somewhat similar. Can the OSAN machine do a 22 inch, 22 stitch per inch stitch? I'm not a technician. I am not sure if it's capable of making uh, a stitch that tight or not. I've never seen Aris production or some other people's production with OSAN do t over 12 stitches to the inch on an OSAN machine. Did you ever make any effort to find out? And incidentally, OSAN machines are fairly common, aren't they? Within Aris, the largest amount of gloves that were out on the marketplace were OSAN. Other companies? have OSAN stitching machines, don't they? I believe they do. It's, it's a common machine, isn't it? It's a common machine readily available. You familiar with the Bonus Golden Series Never Stop machines? I've heard the name Bonus, but I'm not familiar with the machine. Let me show you a flyer for that machine. Objection. I'm, familiar with it. I'm sorry? No. 
objection you can rely on if not familiar with it. Oh, well. You take a look at that and tell me if you're familiar with that machine. Oral. The question is, is he familiar with the machine? Since I never really looked at the numbers on the machines that were at Aris Philippines for style, I've seen similar machines to this with the wheel. I'm very familiar with that. Okay. It's very common. But I don't know for a fact that it was a, a bonus BG12 machine. All right, so the machines you've seen, they can do 25 stitches an inch, can't they? I've never seen them do 25 stitches to the inch. Can they do 25 stitches an inch? I could not state that to this court if I had not done it myself. Can that machine do 25 stitches an inch? According to the flyer, this one well, says sustain. You know where I may have that marked, please? Yes. This is Robertson. 1372. So I take it then, other than calling two companies and asking them specifically about the Brosser machine, you've made no effort to find out what kind of other machines might make a stitch that fine? I have not. Now, the two companies that you contacted, did you just ask them about the Brosser stitching? Well, I, in regard to Founds, I asked them if they had any of the equipment. They told me no, and that was pretty much the end of the conversation. And I, I do have friends that work there, so we may have discussed other things that I'm not aware of. In regard to my conversation with Mr. Zuckerwar, uh, a technician within their company was in the room and mentioned the style number or the... Your objection, you know, non response there. Ask your next question. You know, I don't remember what I spoke with them about. You didn't ask anybody about the three lines, the silking on the back, did you, in terms of how other people may or may not use that? I, I did not discuss anything other than the brasser. So you've made no effort to find out how common or rare the silking is, and that's the three points on the back. I think I earlier stated that it's very common. Now, you're asking questions about glove wear, and, and I think you indicated that they wear out from the inside first. This particular style. Okay. And is that because of the cashmere lining? That's because the cashmere lining was underweight by design, and it, cashmere is a little bit more fragile than most materials that we use for linings, and only using one thread of cashmere versus two, we were concerned about wear and tear on the lining, and that's why in this particular style, the wear and tear would first show up on the lining. Now, you live in uh, New Jersey, I believe, don't you? Yes. Is that very close to New York? Yes. Gets real cold and wet in New York in the winter, doesn't it? Unfortunately, in the last couple of years, it hasn't. And, uh, but on occasion, it does. It snows there, rains there? On occasion. People wear gloves there, don't they? Yes, they do. It's a much more intemperate climate than Southern California, correct? Yes. Would you agree that people that live in New York in the winter wear gloves more often than people in California? I would agree with you. The more you wear gloves, the more you would expect to have indications of wear, correct? That's correct. On the inside, on the lining? On this particular style. Now, you, you indicated to me yesterday, did you not, that you were surprised at how little wear there was on the inside of the Bundy and Rockingham gloves. Yes, I was, considering the condition of the gloves on the outside. And is it, is it not your opinion, or isn't it your opinion, 
that that is probably because whoever wore those gloves on a regular basis had relatively small hands. Objection, no foundation. Oh, well. That's not exactly what I said. What I said to you out in the hallway was that the person that wore the gloves either wore them on brief periods of time or they fit that person very comfortably. They were not the wrong size. You didn't make a comment to me about someone that didn't have large hands wore those gloves because of the almost no wear on the line? No, I stated to you that the person that wore these gloves fit into these gloves without any strain on the lining, which would cause excessive wear. I spoke to you more about what would cause excessive wear versus what would cause less wear. What did you tell me about large hands? Now, this is here saying the 254 Regarding what? World. Regarding what? Regarding the lack of wear in the lining of the evidence gloves and your statement that that's an indication, one, in, one of the inferences you can draw from that is that they were owned by somebody with smaller hands. It didn't, it didn't stretch them out. The person that I stated to you that the person that wore the gloves did not have larger hands than the glove size itself. All right, was the point you were trying to make that a person with larger hands is going to fill out the gloves and there's going to be more wear on the lining than someone whose hands are smaller? Yes. Now, there were indications of wear on the outside of the gloves, correct? On the right hand, very much so. On the left hand, some. And you testified to that before, you recall that? Yes, I did. So your experience is that gloves should wear out from the inside out, correct? There's no way to determine the exact time frame of how long a pair of gloves would last, but it, it's a personal thing, the way a person uses the gloves, the way the gloves fit. You could wear them one or two times, get caught in a snowstorm and change a tire, and the gloves are pretty messed up. It, it, there's no way of telling. You're speculating now, aren't you? Yes. Isn't it fair that one reasonable inference from the fact that these gloves are more worn on the outside than the inside is that a person who owned them had small hands that didn't fill them out and cause the inside to wear? I, I couldn't. Oh, well. I, I couldn't confirm that statement. You can't make that inference at all from what you told us? No, I can't. Mr. Rubin, you, uh, when you, when did you get here, by the way? Last night, or two nights ago? I arrived ago? here Sunday at noon. And from the time that you arrived here uh, until you were in court yesterday, uh, some of that time was spent with prosecutors looking at pictures and videos again? Yes. And while you were in the process of doing that, you noticed on one picture that there appeared to be a defect on one of the brown gloves in the pictures, didn't you? That's not correct. Did you not see what you thought might be a defect? No, what I stated to Mr. Darden was I saw, thought I saw a shadow that I would like to look at the gloves in person to see if I could detect a, de a defect. Right. You saw a shadow that you thought might be a defect, correct? Not a defect, just a marking. Well, you told him it might be a defect, right? I think that's his terminology, not mine. Did you ever use the word defect? I'm not 100. I, I'm not sure. You might have, right? I, I could have. That's what you came down here to look at the gloves for, to see if you could find a defect, correct? I wanted to see if there was any marking in a specific part of the glove that corresponded to a shadow on one of the videos. I wasn't sure whether it was lighting, whether it was a mark. Just wanted to look at it. To see if there was a defect on the evidence gloves that corresponded to what you saw in the picture. Correct. Wasn't there, was it? There was no such defect on the evidence gloves, was there? I didn't see anything that I could definitely re-identify in any photo. Right. Now, which picture were you looking at where you thought you saw shadow, defect, or whatever you want to call it? I don't think that that picture was actually used here. It was one of okay. the photos that was thrown out. 
It was a right hand. Are you referring to one of the gloves the prosecution decided not to use? I believe that in an effort to save time, they just started to arbitrarily knock out different photographers and photos. So the one where you thought you saw a defect, they didn't show to the jury? Sustain. Uh, Sustain. All right. Now, you've indicated from many of these pictures that uh, it's your opinion that you can identify the three points on the back as being the same type of three points that is on the ARIS 70263, correct? That's correct. Now, you've indicated that's a common backing, correct? It's very common, yes. Uh, are there other backings that can be mistaken for that? Uh, I'm not quite clear as to what you mean by that. Well, let me show you a sheet. We would take a look at that. Do you have some foundational questions on this? Yes. Uh, you recognize that as a document that shows various different kinds of stitching that can be used on gloves? Yes, I do. Are you familiar with all of those? I recognize many of them. You know, can I have that mark and put on the Elmo, please? Need a little more foundation than that. Are all those, uh, uh, there actually there's there's different kinds of backing stitching, correct? The three points we're talking about. Yes, these these are different configurations of what I would call three decorative points on the back of the glove. And and you you recognize all of those, do you not? I actually don't recognize all of these. Okay, so there may be some out there that even though you have a lot of experience with gloves, that you're not familiar with. Well, there's many that are out there, but not necessarily used. My question was, could, could be. That some out there that you don't know. Could be. And the top part of that diagram indicates different kinds of stitching for fingers, right? They do, they do but they're poorly represented in these sketches. Okay, but you recognize each one of those? I mean, they're described underneath them, are they not? Y yes. They're all stitches you're familiar with? I'm familiar with all these. And may I have that mark and put on the Elmo, please? That's uh, 1373. This is Robertson, 1373. see those uh, sample stitching because those are the, the silkings that we've been talking about. Right. The three points on the back. Which of those, if it's up there, is on the uh, era 70263? These, these sketches are actually so poor and not really indicative of what they say compared to what's on a glove. If you want me to pull out a glove to show you, like as an example, the bottom right, it says four needle stitching. If you want me to pull out a glove and show you what four needle stitching looks like, it doesn't look like this. I, I, I can't tell. I can't tell from this. You can't tell from those stitches which one is on the heiress? 
The way the draw machine works, there are five positions, there are five needles. You can configure them to do things in different formats. What's on the back of 70263 is needle number one, two, and three with thread without cord. I don't know, I don't, I don't know where it is on here. I, it, it's a blur. Identifying this picture, this is the Gadara picture. Yes. And identifying the backing on the glove. Yes, I did. Can we back it out to get a little clearer, please? <coughs> Your testimony that you can tell that backing was made with a particular configuration of three needles. It appears to have a ridge in the middle. The reason I came up with that is it appears to have a ridge or a high-low in the middle of each point, and that's what gave me indication that it was three needles. There has to be a needle on the right, a needle on the left, and because it has a ridge look, I think there's a, me a needle in the, in the middle, and that's what gave me that conclusion. You see that as, a, as two lower lines and a ridge in the middle? Objection, Your Honor. You didn't look at it on the Alamo. Well, oh, well. Is you, there you, you have to remember, I, I've had the opportunity to look under this photo with a magnifying glass. Mr. Rubin, we're talking about these pictures that the prosecution offered. Are you telling me from that picture you can see three lines of stitching? Objection, from, from this picture, I can't see anything. How about from the picture itself? From this, from this picture, I see a ridge in the middle of the point, which indicates the third needle. And just so we're clear, you're saying that in that picture, or are you saying that you can identify for each of those three lines in the backing that for <coughs> each line has three needle stitches in it? Left, right, and center, yes. Now, is that something you can see in that picture? In my opinion, I can see it. Do you accept how other experts might differ with that? Sustain. One of these pictures in the Renkin pictures from 91, you identified water spots on the gloves? That's correct. There are no corresponding water spots on the evidence gloves that correspond to the water spots on those gloves, correct? I'd have to relook at it again, but I don't think that I could even make any judgment regarding to those particular water spots as to how they relate to a glove today. Well, all right. I, I asked you yesterday, did I not, that if you got water spots on a glove like that, they might stay there, right? For a brief period of time. Did you say brief period of time? Yes. I said to you that as the gloves were worn again and stretched out, they would dissipate. You didn't tell me that sometimes they would, sometimes they would stay? To refresh your memory, Mr. Blazier, I also pointed out that if someone with these Aris Lights gloves, which were truly naked leather, were to wipe their brow and get oil on their finger, the oil would stay on the glove for a brief period of time. But gradually, as the poor person wore the gloves or moved their hands back and forth, the oil would dissipate. You didn't tell me that water spots like that, you told me that they might dissipate, but they also might stay there, didn't you? I don't remember saying that. Now, could we have frame 
uh, I think I may be giving you the wrong number. Uh, 4582, I'm sorry. Mr. Harris, do you need Mr. Fertlow's assistance on finding that? Well, they're not in any worries. Mr. Armand, let's take this down until we find the right frame. Thank you. Remember looking at uh, this frame before, Mr. Rubin? Yes, I do. Now, I believe on your direct testimony, you testified that from this picture, you can identify the brasser stitching on the fingers. Did I, am I correct in that? I don't believe I would have used this one for the brasser stitching. Okay. Uh, but you would use this one for the three lines on the back? I believe this one was used for the palm vent on the left hand. Okay. It was the primary uh, purpose. Now, would you agree that the uh, picture on the monitor is, is a lot better than the big screen? Surely better from here, but not as good as the monitor in the back. Do you see, looking at the monitor, what appears to be a bulge in the palm of that, of Mr. Simpson's left hand under the glove? I don't detect a bulge. Area, what appears to be a raised area uh, right in the palm between the thumb and the fingers. There's a shadowy effect. It could be slightly raised. I don't know. I really don't know what it means. Do you know what a heat pack is? Yes, I'm very familiar with it. And people use heat packs to put in the palms of their gloves to keep their hands warm, don't they? I'm familiar with it. And that's going to cause a glove to stretch, isn't it? It, it could. I'm not familiar with what size heat pack we're talking about. Okay. You can take that down, please. Again, Mr. Rubin, you would agree that you can exclude the West, the gloves in the West pictures, as being the evidence gloves in this case. Due to, due to the color, yes. And you can exclude the Romano gloves, correct? They appear to be black, also. And you can exclude the Kruger pictures, can you not? S same thing, yes. Now, I think your testimony was that you can read writing on what this, whatever this is in the photograph? I clearly... You can answer the question. I clearly stated that I could not read the writing on that tag. All right. Uh, but you can see printing on it? I can see that there is something on it. It appears to be printing. The tag, what I stated was, is in the shape of the Aris Ross Patch label tag. It appears to be beige in color. It appears to have some kind of burgundy printing on it, which, which is the same as what was used on all Aris tags. Now, looking at the Gadara picture again, can you see it from there? You indicated on direct, did you not, that you thought you could identify the Brosser stitching on the fingers in that picture, did you not? On the left hand, on the top ridge of the finger is a very fine ridge, and that would be the only spot that I could detect it from that glove. Can you come and show me where you're pointing, or where you're indicating? Is that, is that the index finger? Uh, four finger. Four finger. Can we have one of your little arrows? Or? You 
talking about the uh, first finger. It's where you see a ridge that you can identify as the brosser stitch. At no. At the end of the finger, there's a very fine ridge, fine line, which appears to be similar to a brosser stitch. Well, and that's why I'm saying it's a brosser stitch. Okay, so from my era, we're actually looking at the end of the finger itself? No. I would put the arrow over here, toward this edge. But I mean, yeah, the, the end of the finger. The end of the finger. Okay. And you can see a ridge there that enables you to identify that's 22 stitches per inch. I, I cannot see 22 stitches in that one specific spot, no. But you've identified that as the Brosser stitch, have you not? It is similar to what a Brosser stitch looks like, yes. Now, you indicated before that you were able, in your mind, you were able to make a positive identification of that style glove from that picture alone, did you not? I didn't say that. What I said was the elements that I could see were part of the elements that make up style 70263. And once again, there are no elements that lead me anywhere else. Is it your uh, testimony that, the on that a Brosser stitch is the only stitch that would look like that in that picture, in the Gadara picture? Any other whip stitch would look similar, but to someone like myself or someone who made a lot of Brosser sewn gloves or was very cognizant of what a Brosser sewn stitch looked like, it would look slightly different. Is it accurate that you cannot uh, offer any opinion at all as to the uh, shades of the colors of the gloves in the pictures, the brown gloves, vis-a-vis -vis the evidence gloves? I can make no attempt whatsoever to determine uh, the photographs as far as colorations due to the fact that in my own experience in making packaging as well as all the advertising that we did with various stores that we never really were able to get the color of the gloves correctly in print packaging, etc. I, I wouldn't make any conclusion regarding color in these photos. Now, in this particular style, Eris actually had two different kinds of brown, correct? That's correct. And one was called a brown, the other was called a mink? That's correct. Was there, were there any other terms used for those? Mink or medium brown. The, what colors are the evidence gloves? Brown. As opposed to medium brown? Or mink, yes. And how about the, did you see any pictures? Well, let me ask you this. Can you tell whether the pictures that you saw, that you testified about, are brown or mink? They're all within the brown family, but no two pictures are alike from any of the photographers. So from the brown pictures in the photographs, you can't say that they are the same shade or the same, necessarily the same color as the Evans gloves. Is that correct? To my best recollection, the color mink was so reddish and lighter in color that it would not be, in any of the photos, would they be mink. These, these photos all reflect brown gloves that I've been shown. Okay, so none of the photos that you've seen, uh, in your opinion, could be mink. That's correct. You remember when you gave a statement to the prosecutors on August 29th? Over the phone? Yeah. That's correct. Did you know that was being taped? Yes. Did you know that they made a transcript of it? Yes. Have you seen that transcript? I have not seen the transcript. Do you remember when they were asking you that you had the, uh, one of the Renkin pictures, that's the uh, umbrella pictures? Yeah. Brown glove? Right. They asked you what color it was? Remember what you said? I, I, that color is the closest to mink of what mink would look like. Do you remember what, what you said? I don't remember 100%. Do you remember saying, I am not quite sure whether they are really what was called mink or dark brown, but they are definitely a shade of brown? I, I'll stand by that. So when you were looking at these pictures on August 31st, you weren't sure whether they were mink or brown, were you? Objection. They're Rankin pictures. Thanks. Excuse me. Rephrase the question. When you were looking at the Rankin pictures, 
You had them on your end of the phone. You were talking to the prosecution on their end of the phone. You told them you couldn't tell whether that was Brown or Mink, correct? That's what I said. Now you're coming here in your testimony. You're now saying it can't be Mink. Is that, is that right? Well, the reason I'm saying that is because I actually called the photographer myself to ask him well, about the coloration, and he more or less led me toward the indication that his color was slightly, could be slightly off. You thought they might have been mink when you saw them before. It's the same picture, isn't it? Could be. It is the same picture, isn't it? I, I believe it's the same. Or a copy. You testified on direct here today that, in your opinion, the gloves in these pictures are, are a snug fit on Mr. Simpson? That's correct. May I ask you to look again at the Gadara picture? Would you agree that the leather seems to be bunched up around the fingers? On the right hand in that particular picture, his hand is arch slightly backward and that's the effect you would get on a leather glove. On the left hand, it appears to be more uh, like a normal snug fit. Would you agree that between the Gadara picture and the Renkin picture three years earlier, the gloves appear to be bigger in the Gadara picture on Mr. Simpson's hands? I think I would be speculating. You're not willing to make any kind of assessment for looking at the photographs on that point? It appears that in the Rankin picture, Mr. Simpson has his hand a little farther around the microphone. His knuckles are a little bit over, a little bit more to the left of the photos. It, it would be difficult to say that I could tell the difference between the exact fit between the two photos. Isn't it your opinion that the gloves in the pictures that you've been shown in this case are either a regular extra large that fit Mr. Simpson or an oversized extra large. That's correct. So from the pictures, they appear to be possibly too big for him. Yes. There are no pictures where the gloves appear to be too small for him. Would you agree with that? The only thing that you see in the pictures regarding small is in the shortness where he yeah, wears the gloves, but I don't see anything in the finger area that indicates they're too small or around the, the back of the palm. receipt. Do you still have it? All right, Mr. Uh, Pleasure, what uh, exhibit is that? This is uh, 372B. Actually, let me use 372. <coughs> trying to figure out which one's better. Two 
2.30. Okay. Now, Mr. Rubin, you've seen this receipt before, have you not? Yes, I have. And can you tell from that receipt, let's assume they were gloves, what color they are? No, I cannot. Can you tell what size they are? No, I cannot. There were, I think you testified, a thousand dozen or 12,000 pairs of gloves that were ordered by Bloomingdale for this particular season, correct? That's correct. All that would that, that have the same style number? That's correct. And you had been producing those gloves with those same characteristics for 10 years? Not 10 years. From, from 1982, I'm sorry, as of 90, it had been eight years, correct? Yes. And then they produced them for several years after that? I believe about a year and a half. Now, I think you indicated when you testified before that they started slow and then increased to a thousand dozen a year for a period of time. Uh, is it fair to say that uh, a rough estimate of the number of these gloves sold to Bloomingdale's during that period of time, 40, 50,000 pairs? No, no. I 30, would say, if, if I had to uh, speculate, that the quantity was more in the range of around 2,500 dozen for the eight-year period, with the bulk of it being in the last two. Uh, 2,500 dozen is? 30,000 pair. 30,000 pair. And 10,000 pair, 12,000 pair in the last year? That was what was originally contracted for. I'm not sure if they took them all in for sale. So are we talking 40, 50,000 pair, maybe? Oh, well, I, I think it's closer to 30, 35,000 pair totally from the time they were started buying them until the time I left in 1990. Mm -hmm. And how many different colors are there? I believe we made five. And how many different sizes? Four. So would it be fair to say that there were 20 different combinations of that style number that you could get? There were 20 SKUs. OK, so 20 different possibilities that someone could purchase if they bought these gloves. Size and color. Only one of which would be extra large brown. That's correct. Ni the other 19 would be something different than the evidence gloves, correct? That's correct. And you had no way of knowing whether these are receipts for that one out of 20 or something in the 19 out of 20, correct? I do not. Now, this receipt doesn't even have the style number 70263, does it? No, it does not. So if you accept that the receipt is accurate, these aren't for Aris Isotone or Leather Lights, are they? I think that this has been covered in previous testimony. In reg I'll, I'll give you a chance to explain, but the question is, if you look at the receipt and look at the numbers, that's something other than Aris Leather Lights, correct? Overall. Oh, the jury, the jury sat through this. That particular style. Hold on, hold on. Ask another question. You can't tell these are Aris Leather Lights from this receipt, can you? I actually can, but no one else except the buyer and myself could. Because the receipt states the manufacturer, the fact that it's leather, and the price. And the only thing sold at Bloomingdale's that year at that price happened to be the Aris Light style. How do you know that? Upon review with the actual buyer of all the styles that were sold to Bloomingdale's by Aris that year, all the gloves retailed at different price points. Did you hear Ms. Bemich's testimony about whether there were other gloves on sale for that price? Yes. A after, I, uh, after she testified, though. Would you agree that she would have more information about that than you would? Not necessarily in regard, no, I would not. In order to assume that that receipt is for Aris Leather Lights. You have to assume that some mistake was made, correct? That's correct.
and you have to assume that what should have been on there was something other than what was put on there. That's correct. You cannot say, can you, Mr. Rubin, that whatever this receipt is for is the evidence gloves in this case, correct? No, I cannot. You cannot say that whatever is, talk is in that receipt is in any of these pictures, can you? No, I cannot. You have no information about the habits of Nicole Brown Simpson with respect to buying gloves for other people, do you? Absolutely not. You cannot say, can you, Mr. Rubin, that the gloves in the pictures that you've seen are pictures of the gloves in evidence, can you? I can only state that it, they are the same style and color. I cannot state that they are the same pair. Now, I believe you identified the lining in the Romano gloves. I'm sorry? Romano photos. Romano photo. You've identified that lining as cashmere. Yes, I did. Doesn't 100% wool look very similar to that? No, it doesn't. How about a combination of wool and cashmere? It would look slightly lighter. Slightly lighter in color? Yes. So you're, you're stating unequivocally this is cashmere because of the lighting in this photograph? It appears to be a, a darker shade of brown than I'm used to seeing in a combination wool and cashmere blend, and for sure it is not a, a wool blend. So now you're giving us an opinion based on the shades in a photograph. I'm, I'm only comparing the shade to the shell of the glove. If we're going on the basis that the glove is black, I'm comparing the shading of the lining to the glove. Could it be a synthetic acrylic? It, I, I have not seen acrylic that, that looks like that, but anything is possible. You have made no effort other than contacting two glove companies to find out if there are other gloves out there that have the same characteristics as these Aris leather lights, have you? Oh. I have not contacted, I don't know, let me just say this, I do, I do not know of any other people to call other than the two largest competitors to Aris. You don't know how to find all of these hundred or so other glove companies around the world? If you, if you want to pay me to do that, I'll be glad to do it. You know where they are, don't you, Mr. Rubin? I, I, really, I really do not know where they are. I would go to Milan, I would go to N Naples, and I would start to find out where all these companies are. But I'm not going to do that on my own. And you, know, you made no effort to do that, did you? No, I did not. No further questions. Mr. Dark. Thank you. Can I put 372A on the Alamo Zoom back. Let's focus on the right hand side of the. Uh... Looking at your monitor, say, so do you see where it indicates muffler? In the case that a muffler was purchased? At Bloomingdale's on December 18, 1990? Yes. At the same time that Nicole Brown purchased two pairs of gloves? Yes. Yes, All the way to there. the right, M-U-F-F. It's on there. It's on there. No. That David. Was, there was, hold on, hold on. There was testimony to that. Next question. Can you understand that as an exhibit in this case? Yes. Okay. Take that down, please. Let's go to frame. Uh, Let 
me ask you to look at that photograph. Yes. You understand this is a photograph from January uh, 6th or 5th, 1992? It's, it's a video. Okay. All right, ask frame number 25862. Is the defendant wearing a muffler in this photograph? Yes, he is. That's the thing around his neck? Yes, it is. Does it appear to be brown? Yes, it is. And the gloves he's wearing? Do they appear to be brown? Yes, they, they appear to be. You don't know whether or not Nicole Brown purchased the defendant a muffler and two pairs of gloves on December 18, 1990 at Bloomingdale's, do you? It's a stain. When you first saw the photographs uh, that you were shown and those photographs that were sent to you, you looked at those photographs under a magnifying glass, is that correct? Yes, I did. You wanted to be certain of your opinion? Objection, please. Sustain, rephrase the question. Did you want to be sure that you were correct when you gave an opinion? Yes, I did. And toward that end, you called a couple of manufacturers, glove manufacturers? Yes, I did. You contacted one of the photographers, uh, Mr. Rankin? Yes, I did. And why did you contact Mr. Rankin? I basically just wanted to find out how uh, accurate his color was, if it could vary, because the gloves were like a medium brown. They weren't as light as what mink was, but then again, if it was really mink in the picture and his color was dark, they could have been mink. But basically, he indicated that he could be slightly off, so I just ignored it plus or minus. And this is information you wanted to have so that you can make sure that you provided this jury the most accurate testimony you could. Okay. Were you interested in providing this jury with the most accurate testimony that you could? Absolutely. And the most honest testimony that you could? Yeah, yes. Would you agree that the best test to determine whether or not the gloves in the photographs are mink or brown is to have the jury take a look at those photographs and compare them to the crime scene gloves and the New gloves tried on by the defendant? At this point in time, the crime scene gloves are almost unrecognizable as far as color, uh, size, texture. It would be very difficult to compare them. However, newer gloves or less used gloves, I think it would be important that the jury see the stitching up close on the, on the gloves. Let me show you what has been marked 401. One of the new gloves that the defendant tried on. What color is that glove? Brown. Can we have the jury take a look at uh, 401 as well as one of the uh, Rankin photographs? Which, which Rankin photograph? Six B. All right, and you want the jury to look at the photograph and compare the brown glove? Yes. 401? Yes. All right, hand it to uh, juror number one, please. And before I do that, the crime scene gloves, do they appear to be brown also? Yes, they are. All right, and after we complete the uh, view and examination by the jury, we'll take a uh, brief recess. Mr. Dark. As soon as the jury completes their examination comparison of the photograph in 401, we'll take a uh, our mid-afternoon recess.
All right, Mr. Darden, would you collect those items from uh, Deputy Long, please? No, I was just asking you to collect the items from Deputy Long. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take our mid-afternoon recess. Remember all my admonitions to you. Mr. Rubin, you may step down. You're ordered to come back in 15 minutes. We're talking about three gloves that are all right. very, very similar. I think you should even shown to them. No, I mean, for the testimony, I would object to uh, further demonstration. Well, the issue of color has clearly been brought up, though. All right, let's have the jurors, uh, Deputy McNair. All right, let the record reflect that we've been rejoined by all the members of our jury panel. Mr. Richard Rubin is again on the witness stand undergoing redirect examination by Mr. Darden. And, counsel, if you recollect, we need to conclude before the jury today at 4 o'clock due to some uh, doctors and dentist appointments. I only have five or six more minutes, Your Honor. All right, Is Mr. Uh, Darden, you may proceed. Thank you. Mr. Rubin, you, you uh, testified regarding uh, the issue or on the issue of whether or not you saw any defects or uh, any uh, anything unusual in the gloves shown in the photographs. Is that correct? That's correct. Did you see anything unusual uh, on the gloves shown in the photographs? No, I did not. You saw a shadow, you say? On a video. Okay. Was there any defect at all in any of the brown gloves shown in the photographs shown to the jury that you saw? Nothing that I could see. And was there any defect that you saw in the Rockingham glove? Nothing that I could see on the back. How about the Bundy glove? Nothing. Okay, so there's no defect that you saw on the Rockingham, Bundy, or gloves uh, shown in the photographs here in court today? No, nothing. But you were checking to see? I was looking, yes. You have been careful? I tried to be as careful as possible. Do you have anything to gain?